And to provide an alternative viewpoint on whose curriculum is it anyway, we have Dr. Tony Gardner. Tony is a research mathematician and has helped to set up several enduring mathematical initiatives, many of them, such as the UK MT, are concerned with providing appropriate choices and challenge for high attaining students. His mathematical challenge and extension books remain popular and contain plenty of useful materials for pupils and teachers alike. Tony is a re recipient of both the Paul Erdos and the Excellence in Mathematics Education Award. So let's welcome Tony. Well, I should say that I, I hate PowerPoint. I think this is the fourth time I've tried to use it. And uh, I apologize for the incompetence. I, I feel a bit like Jacob Rees-Mogg, who sort of, <laughs> who sort of wheeled out to defend some lost cause. Uh, who can we get to speak on behalf of the indefensible and the outmoded? Um, it's supposed to change. It did. The framework, Cambridge Mathematics, has been intriguing from the outset. I don't know about you lot, I sat through the first talk and remembered my first year at university where I looked round and thought, they all look as if they're understanding it. I haven't a clue. I read the early stuff, but if you're an outsider, it's difficult to understand it in the way the insiders have come to understand it. So one has to be patient and wait for the fruits to allow one to access what it is they mean. Um, the Cambridge brand must have seemed like a good idea at the time. Um, I'm not sure about now. Uh, so my own position is really rather naive. And I think there are two approaches to mathematics education and to science in general, if you look at history. One is to try to do better by adding layers and layers of complication, which may give you a more accurate figure, a bit like Ptolemy's epicycles. It may give you a, a better figure, better theory, but it's harder to comprehend. The other is to say, we're not ready for that yet, or it's not what I need day to day, and to aim at simplicity that may be incomplete but is actually more practicable from the point of view of the classroom teacher. I am fairly simple-minded. I'm not obviously more simple-minded than the typical classroom teacher, so I reckon it might have something going for it. So my view is that I've not seen the group in a room like this for a long time, uh, ever perhaps. We have the four pen holders named people responsible for the curriculum in 2012, 2013. And we even have somebody who I think may have been responsible for writing the drafts that they considered. What we don't have here are the dark forces who edited their efforts. Um, but my own view is that, that the simple version one should be aiming for is an outline curriculum, which if you are simple-minded, too simple-minded, you will treat as a list of itemized sub-levels that you can tick off. That's not the point, but it's going to look a bit like a list, whatever you write it as. Uh, and I don't think you can make sense of that as a list. It becomes fragmented unless you have an outworking of that outline that, I'm going to use a rude word now, like a series of texts. A textbook is an outworking of an outline. And the best example I know around, which I would urge you all to look at, it's not perfect, uh, is the Maths No Problem outworking of the Key Stage 1, Key Stage 2 outline. Uh, by looking at the outworking, you can see what's wrong with the outline and it should be a to and fro process. But that's a fairly simple-minded approach. 
Um, so I, I think I see our difficulty as being a bit like the history of science or medicine. There is a kind of, I mean, I think mum's net is a wonderful thing to, to browse when you've got nothing better to do, to, to find what uh, the ordinary souls do with mathematics and the education of their children. Uh, there's a stage of uh, primitive believing in genius or whatever. There's a pseudoscience where you have a theory, but there's no process of checking. There's then what I think of as the Greek Renaissance tradition of go, look, and see. Don't trust. You may not be wise enough to understand what you see, but you can at least look. This is a kind of Protestant view of the Bible. I think we've got a bit stuck in practitioners, barber surgeons versus professionals, and most of us are not barber surgeons. I see James as a barber surgeon and the rest of us as, as sort of something else. Um, the barber surgeons focus on hacking effectively, even if messily. The professionals, I think of the madness of King George and the studying of the feces and the urine and the theories that they had to interpret what they saw. Uh, and my sympathies are essentially, with, at the moment, with practitioners, not with the professionals and their elaborate theories. One would like to get to the next stage and even to the next stage, which is more like Jon Snow looking at what he sees during the cholera outbreak in Soho and concluding that it might have something to do with the water and hence removing the handle from the pump. So one wants to get towards that kind of uh, move long before we get to modern medicine. When I was given this uh, title, I didn't like it, but I was sent away to read Paul Ernest, Philosophy of Mathematics Education. I really think it is the most appalling tripe. <laughs> it would be excellent as an undergraduate essay. I would congratulate it. It's, it really is pseudo-Marxist sort of uh, adolescent nonsense, in my view. You cannot classify people like this. It doesn't do any harm to do it as an exercise and to realise there are different views of the mathematics curriculum, but these are not they, and most of us couldn't classify ourselves anywhere on the spectrum. Um, so uh, what he does, essentially, is to write it. You can see the way he's writing. Most of these are written unsympathetically as reactionary, and the last uh, social constructivist mode is then the goodies. And it just seems to be this business of demanding one's place in the sun and then defining oneself to be the good guy is not a helpful way forward. Um, there is, of course, an intruder. Uh, some of you are old enough even to remember this. Uh, the M word. I asked Lynn what Cambridge Mathematics did about the M word and was told we don't use it. Um, well... Unfortunately, some people do, and I think it focuses on the choice that we've got to make. Uh, the national curriculum uses the F word, fluency, rather a lot. I don't think there's anything wrong with the M word. The, betray the sort of giveaway is the fact that it's used over and over again without any other variation. The M word came in afterwards. The M word doesn't appear at all in the national curriculum. It came in essentially from the East, and it has been taken over and redefined. Every school uses it, every CPD opportunity uses it, and it is awful. Why? Because they don't know, please haven't clarified what it means. There are different interpretations. Uh, some have taken it as something you can achieve with a diet of rich tasks. Um, if you look at my career, I'm not going to speak against rich tasks, but they're not the answer, because they don't join up. They don't leave, they don't crystallize, they don't leave you with anything you can use, and it doesn't build over time. They're just fun in isolation. Uh, the NCTM has avoided saying what mastery is, really, and gone to its big ideas. Well, I don't believe big ideas ever did anybody any good. They make you feel nice in the bar, but... Um, that's about it. Uh, 
but the main thing is people have gone to look at what, it, what mastery might mean, and they're only looking at English language research. And that means they look not east, but west. And if you look up mastery, you'll find the American version, which is dice, test, and move on. Chop it into little bits, teach it in a trivialized way. It was designed as a way of turning vegetative human beings into people who could at least raise their arm or move something. It proved, it was wonderful, it proved that you should not give up on anybody. But educationally, it's nonsense. You cannot teach mathematics by chopping things into little bits, teaching them in a micro way, testing them and moving on, which is the Educational Endowment Foundation or Complete Maths or whatever you name version of mastery. So we've got an intruder who has muddied the waters. I think we just have to look for an alternative to big enders, little enders, cowboys, Indians, us and them, and try to reject these crude dichotomies and back off and realize effective systems depend on combining two things. A consensus, which you have to work towards, which is shaped by analysis and reflection and gradually building consensus. Um, and once you accept that, it's worth looking to see to what extent elementary mathematics makes that kind of consensus attainable. And I'm afraid, as a very ancient figure, I think it's obvious. I mean, essentially, no matter what you do in looking at uh, curricula and curriculum design, you come back to the fact that Elementary mathematics is more or less shared. Um, then you should look to see where there's scope for disagreement. And that come, tends to come in later as you move up. My, my impression is that up to about age 13 or so, people needn't fight. There are some things you can debate where data science should come in, how geometry should be introduced, and so on. But essentially, there is a large amount that is agree agreeable. Um, and then one should sit down and explore the alternatives and say, where is there flexibility? Where does, may I say it, God, mathematics, allow one the flexibility to go this way first rather than that way first? So I think one's got to try and find a way towards this alternative, and I have just simply left you with two slides which are my naive 70-year-old attempt. I don't think you can preempt the path to consensus, so one should be tentative. Uh, I think one should lay aside personal preferences and vested interests, and that's very difficult, because many of us in this room have got a dog in the race. We have backed rich tasks, or we backed something or other, or we're employed by NCTM or something, or even Ofsted. Um, maybe not. Um, OK. So I think it shouldn't be too hard to accept that the goal is to get independent young adults within society, which means our society. What that means, of course, one expo can explore later. I think you've got to distinguish possible pathways. And every, when this has been tried, too many people have influenced the choices, and it's got too complicated. Adrian Smith made it too complicated. Thank you. And my reading of the evidence you can read on your sheet. I think you've got to accept that up to a certain point, it's quite clear what's shared, and the abstract matters for everybody. So key stage one and key stage two, one's got to come seriously to terms with the abstract and how it plays. Up, end of key stage three, I think one's got to consider a vocational version, uh, and I believe one should be trying to uh, get not only the outline, but also the outworking in the form of texts, just to see how difficult it is and where one's gone wrong. Thank you.